Hello and welcome from the back seat of Rolls-Royce Phantom 8th generation. So, what is Rolls-Royce Phantom all about? It's about comfort and this is the place to feel the comfort, the back seat. You want to be here and if you buy a 5.7, 5.8 meter long limousine, it's likely you're going to travel in the back here quite a lot. Okay, Rolls-Royce in its numerous press releases boasts all the awards this car has received. Basically, this is the best car in the world according to the press releases. But Rolls-Royce also tells us about all the comfort features and all the technologies it employed to make this car comfortable. So let's talk about those comfort features and uh, where to start, where to start. Well, we should probably start with uh, sound insulation. This car, this is the short wheel base Phantom, so 5.7 something meters, weighs two and a half tons. More than that actually, but let's say two and a half tons. This is like two or three hundred kilograms more than the V12 M60LE long wheel base uh, BMW 7 series. And part of this weight is sound deadening or sound insulation. Rolls-Royce is actually proud and it mentions it in the press release that around 160 kilograms of this car is sound insulation or sound insulation related things. So that would include double glazing all around and that includes these tiny windows here, this big window here front windows, side windows in the front, that's obvious, uh, that's uh, very common in other cars, but here also rear windows and uh, everything else is sound insulated. The space frame is filled either with foam or with felt, depending on, uh, depending on where it is. These thick carpets, obviously, they do a lot to, uh, to help sound insulation, to insulate you from the outside noises. The boot is also very nicely finished to help sound insulation. So all is about sound insulation uh, and also about comfort. Uh, we'll talk about some comfort features once we get in the front. But while we're here, this car is on 22 inch wheels, rims. And as a result, it didn't get one extra comfort feature, which it would normally if it was on 21 inch wheels. We're talking about special foam, which is injected into tires, which were designed especially for Rolls-Royce by Continental. So if you take a Rolls-Royce Phantom with 21 inch rims, you get tires, which are filled with special foam, which decreases road noise apparently by around uh, 10 decibels I think that is so this car this entire car is still more quiet and more refined than its predecessor surprise surprise but Rolls-Royce is really taking it to the next level and we'll talk about that also in the front but before we go to the front let's talk about things that we have here the amenities for um, for the CEO or I don't know whoever travels in the back of a Rolls-Royce Phantom so we've got yes uh, all the doors now can be closed with a button uh, in the past these were, these were only back doors that were closed by a button and in the front the driver had to work by himself but now or by herself because Anna is driving me um, but here everyone gets a button to close their doors in the front uh, there is a volume switch here should I want to uh, increase or decrease volume without looking for my mm, Rolls-Royce version of iDrive controller we'll get to that in a moment and there is also footrest adjustment which started working now I was recording the Polish version a couple of minutes ago and the footrest would not work and now it works so all is well again now this controller it's nicely concealed because Rolls-Royce customers apparently 
don't want to be exposed to technology. So instead of a tablet like in a BMW 7 Series, by the way, this is not related, this is a bigger car. But anyway, instead of a tablet, we get this uh, BMW controller and we can either press a button there on the seat or we can press a button here and the table unfolds and a screen pops out. Now, I haven't figured out yet how to get rid of the screen uh, without closing the table. So I can do that. The screen disappears, the table folds away, and then I can unfold the table, for example, and work on my laptop or something. And in order to work on my laptop, uh, I would have to probably bring this seat back a little bit so that I could actually reach the picnic table. I'm sure it's called something much more fancy in Rolls-Royce terms. Or if I don't want to work on my picnic table, fancy table, I can push this chair away. Again, since this is the short wheelbase Rolls-Royce Phantom, I can barely, barely, well, I can't really stretch my legs properly. So, sorry about that. If you want to stretch your legs, you need to go for the long wheelbase version, which is almost six meters long, and then you get these um, unfolding footrests from the from the bottom of the seat, like, uh, like in business class on an airplane. So, this... This is going on the cheap, this version. Anyway, uh, what else do you get here? Well, of course, the seats are fully adjustable. We have, well, I wish we had. We have a uh, container like this to um, carry around some whiskey. A nice bottle like that and a couple of Rolls-Royce branded glasses. So, for example, I like my infusions, which I sometimes make and I think I would Put an infusion here instead of uh, whiskey. I don't like whiskey or bourbon or anything like that. This is also a place where a induction charger lives for the passenger, one passenger in the back, because there's only one induction charger in the back. And I don't see a USB port in the back here. Or is there? No, these are just 12 volt sockets. So quite old school there, but still. A few years ago, could you imagine an induction charger in a Rolls-Royce? Unimaginable, really. What else do we have here? Well, if you're not into infusions, whiskeys or whatever, you may be into good old bubbly. And good old bubbly is to be had, enjoyed in glasses like this. And where to put those glasses later? Well, fortunately, Rolls-Royce has thought of that. These are ordinary cup holders here, but there are also those champagne glass holders. So, all is well when you're on a motorway like this, cruising. You can sip your champagne, put the glass away, and uh, nothing should really happen to it. Okay, so, what else is... There? Of course, the starlight, starlight, starlight. Uh, yes, you can adjust the brightness of the of the stars, so you can dim them or you can make them brighter. I think I would like to have more of them and make them even brighter. There is also your mirror, should you want to do your makeup. And should you want to just check your makeup, your hair, just before you leave the car into the wild, wild open full of paparazzis, you can check it in this mirror here and I look just about fine, so I think we can take a short break and I can go to the front and tell you what this car is like to drive. And we're back. This time I'm behind the wheel of the 8th generation Rolls-Royce Phantom. The most comfortable car there is, says Rolls-Royce. Okay, so let's start with the comfort features or one extra feature which I didn't mention and that's the radar-based dampers. 
uh, Rolls Royce calls it this or other, but basically it's the same system I've uh, talked about in length in my DS7 review. It's something that was utilized by Mercedes, I think, earlier on. And basically what it does, up to speeds of 100 kilometers per hour, a camera scans the road in front of the car and readies the dampers for whatever imperfections there are on the road. So we won't be able to test it here on the motorway, but when I was driving along the city, uh, it worked really great. So it smooths out all the potholes and uh, it's just a great piece of technology. Once you drive a car with one of these systems and you get into another car, life is never the same again. How is the Rolls-Royce Phantom to drive? Well, you captain it rather than drive it. Uh, basically, every maneuver has to be planned well in advance. So, you turn the wheel and you can feel the car lean ever so slightly and then it changes direction. When it comes to braking, oh gosh, the two and a half tons can be felt. Oh yes, they can be felt. Uh, of course, I'm sure that the dampers are doing their best not to have the front dive too much, but yes, it dives. You can see that the spirit of ecstasy is like half a meter lower all of a sudden. And uh, the car, if it could speak, it would probably say something on the lines of, um, I beg your pardon, sir, but um, perhaps sir would consider not breaking so violently because uh, one was not made for that. Anyway, it, come on, it's, it's physics. I mean, two and a half tons, what do you expect? It's, it's just going to be difficult to brake. As far as driving it is concerned, now, I didn't really have to park it today yet, properly, so I don't feel how big the car is. Okay, I'm sitting slightly higher than everybody else, so it's like maybe uh, driving a really low SUV. But, uh, generally speaking, I don't feel the size of the car. All I can hear is maybe some slight wind noise around the wing mirrors. Generally speaking, it's very, very quiet indeed. Now, let's talk about something else, and that is the gallery. And the gallery, let me just uh, hide the screen. So, the gallery is all this bit of trim here which is behind glass why is it behind glass because you can have all sorts of stuff in there so for example rolls-royce has several themes which it will sell you as standard so for example here this looks maybe a bit like i don't know sand in the desert or something but you can have pretty much anything there you can go to your rolls-royce bespoke consultant manager whatever they're called and work with them to have something interesting installed there whether it's a piece of art or some sort of a memorabilia maybe your kids first picture or maybe you know some artist and you want to commission uh, this artist to make something especially for your Rolls Royce then this artist will work with Rolls Royce bespoke program and they will arrange something to put in there. It can be a painting, it can be a sculpture, it can be um, whatever, ceramic, you name it, it's gonna be there. Now, speaking of hiding the screen away and hiding other bits of technology away, like in the previous Phantom, also here, the controller, the uh, not iDrive but Rolls-Royce something controller, is hidden away in this little drawer, let's say. Once you open it, the screen pops out automatically because it thinks that, uh, and rightly so, that you're going to use it. So it, uh, it pops out like that. Uh, personally, I like to have it stowed. However, when I have it stowed, there is a slight problem. So for example, if I'm talking on the phone, um, I would like to end the conversation. And in order to end the conversation, I look for something to press, like this knob here. But this knob is for volume control, not for controlling your phone. So in order to uh, 
end the call, I would either have to open the controller and use that because this is behind glass, so it's not a touch screen, or I have to find this rather small button here on the on the steering wheel. And this is just a minor annoyance, but uh, I don't like it. In a car, prices of which start at around 50,000, 450,000 euro and go up another 150 or 200,000, depending on how imaginative you and the bespoke people are. Uh, you know, you would expect better usability, I guess. And I understand it's due to the fact that it's partially uh, BMW parts that had to be adapted for this car, blah, blah, blah. Well, just a minor annoyance. Now, another thing I noticed, okay, so I've driven three or four rollers in my life, so I'm not a big Rolls expert. However, usually getting into a Rolls Royce, I know more or less what is happening. And today in the morning, as I was picking the car up, the uh, gentleman uh, handing me the car, the keys and everything, said, oh, I know you, you've driven so many cars, Rolls Royce cars, you'll be fine. So I got in and the first thing, I couldn't close the door because the buttons to close the door are now sort of concealed down here rather than here where they used to be exposed in the Phantom Coupe I drove a few years back. Okay, fine. So where to start the car? Uh, where is the start button? Well, it's not here because now it's here. I don't know if it's some sort of Porsche racing tradition or whatever, but it's it's down there and basically sitting from here, you can't see it. You have to lean like that to, to see anything. There is also the whatever BMW shield or whatever you want to call it, all the safety systems. So this car now has them. So there is a safety net around you. It's got your 360 degree cameras and all that to make parking uh, somewhat easier. Now, the middle here, the center console remained very much old school, like in older Rolls's. So you have four levels of, um, of how strong the air is supposed to blow. And then you have these two rolling things to set the temperature in the bottom part of the cabin and in the upper part of the cabin. So you can have your legs cooled, but face heated or the other way around, or you can have both heated or both cooled. There are two glove boxes, one on the top and one on the bottom. The bottom one is very small, the mm, top one is slightly more usable, but they're probably generally small due to the whole gallery thing, which has to be hidden somewhere, and I bet there are airbags somewhere here. I have no clue where they've hidden them, but they must be somewhere in here. There is a little drawer here, which is good enough to maybe store your glasses or, I don't know, maybe cigars, for example. And then there is your storage under the armrest, which is not very big, but this is where the only USB port in this car is located. There is also a 12-volt socket and another induction charger. What I like, really like, is that these front cup holders are chilled. So uh, my water is all nice and cool when it's uh, when it's down here. Very, very uh, useful, I would say. Also, depending on the temperature and whatever, you can have air blow from here. These are theoretically door handles, I guess, but you can have air blow from here and you can have your back in the back, you can have your armrests, armrests, yeah, heated as well. So uh, you don't have to, you don't have to put your hands on cold materials uh, on a chilly day. So all about comfort in Rolls Royce. It's a powerful car, and there is no denying it. This is a V12 by turbo. It doesn't have any sort of cylinder shutoff technology. It doesn't have uh, it doesn't have stop and start. There is just power all the time whenever you need it. However, now cruising on the motorway at 140 kilometers per hour, which is the legal speed limit on motorways in Poland, I still have about 90, 80 something percent of power reserve because Rolls Royce, as usual, doesn't have a normal rev counter, but it has a power reserve meter. 
so I have a lot of power left to deal with. Interestingly, these dials, despite being round and despite looking like they are analog, they are in fact three digital dials. So your power reserve meter, your speedo and your fuel and uh, temperature gauge and some other stuff displayed between them somewhere. And I get it, you need these screens these days because there are just too many functions, too many things going on to have little lamps blinking, uh, lights blinking all over, the, all over the cockpit. You don't want that. That would not be very legible. Okay, so um, I think I've talked in length about the new Rolls-Royce Phantom and uh, if you have any questions do ask them in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video at least half as much as I enjoyed driving this car because driving a Rolls-Royce is always, always, always a very special occasion and uh, you know whenever they call and say hey would you drive a Rolls Royce of ours <laughs> I'll drop anything to spend a day or two with this car even if it's just a day or two so see you in the next one